Thank you, Richard and Steve. It's an honor to be here tonight with you all. And thank you for creating this event. And if you haven't done so yet, please go to the website, walkthetalkseries.com, and read the vision statement. So tonight we're going to talk about mindfulness. And the first thing that I wanted to do was talk about uh, definition of mindfulness. And I went old school. I went to the dictionary first. Wow, that's a lot. So then I did what I normally do. I Googled it. And I found an article that had narrowed it down to 20 definitions of mindfulness. And what I found in my research is that there are about as many definitions of mindfulness as there are spiritual leaders and spiritual teachers. And the common thread, and I think the definition that really applies to me and my practice, and I do call it a practice, is to be present in the moment without judgment. So then I wanted to talk about what does that look like and how do I do that? And again, in my research, there are just as many paths as there are teachers and leaders. And the path that I use is through meditation and a meditation practice. And I was first introduced to meditation in early 2009. I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I would start and stop and I couldn't stop my thoughts and I didn't know at the time that that was normal. One time I thought I was in a really deep meditation because I fell asleep. <laughs> exactly, I told my friends and they were like, no, that wasn't deep, you were just tired. <laughs> so that went on and I would start and stop and start and stop until December of 2013 when I was introduced to this. This is an app, it's called Insight Timer App. And after my sessions, it tells me how many people I've meditated with, and it's people all over the world, and I can make friends, and it keeps my score, which could be the topic for another talk, perfectionism, <laughs> right? But in this case, it worked for me because I hate when my count goes back to one consecutive day. So I put the app above my social media apps and I started going to that every day instead of clicking on those and scrolling around and stuff. And what that did for me is it helped me develop a practice. And uh, I've had, you know, put together a little bit of time, and I'm so anal that I wanted to update my time, you know, before they put my slide up here. But uh, it helped me develop really a practice. And so then it, last year, at the end of last year, I was able to go with my friends, Susie and her sister, Carol the coach. And we went to the last Hay House convention, and uh, it was called I Can Do It. It was in Fort Lauderdale, and there we met this man. His name is David G, D-A-V-I-D-J-I. And he is a meditation leader and teacher and author, and he studied under Deepak Chopra. And I just fell in love with him. He's got free guided meditations on his website also. And while we were there at the conference, he did with the crowd what he called a 16 second time in. And I'm gonna have you all do it now. I am not a meditation teacher, and I just realized I'm probably doing this more for me than for you. <laughs> but I want you all to get comfortable. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose for four seconds. Hold the breath at the top for four seconds. Exhale slowly for four seconds. Hold the breath out for four seconds. Now breathe normally and open your eyes. And what happens in that 16 seconds is it brings you back to your breath and brings you back to the moment. And it's so easy and he said, it was so funny, he was like, you can do it anywhere in your car, but if you're driving, keep your eyes open. <laughs> but also if you're new to meditation, you literally can start with 16 seconds and just do 16 seconds at a time. And if I can build a meditation practice, anyone can. And I encourage you to at least try it because I truly believe in meditation and all of the benefits. There are so many benefits, not just mindfulness. And I truly believe that it works. And I notice it more on the days that I don't do it than on the days that I do. That's how I can really tell the difference. And then in June of this year, something happened. I felt like I had been punched in my gut and I couldn't catch my breath. I felt like my foundation had been rocked, I couldn't get grounded, I couldn't get centered, I couldn't stay centered, and nothing was working. And I've been told what I'm thinking and feeling shows on my face. And I must have been walking around looking like I was hurt. And I ran into my friend Scott Watson, and I think he asked me, 
if I was okay, and I must have said, no, instead of the usual, I'm fine. Because we ended up meeting for coffee. And he asked me what was going on. And I told him, like the crying, snot-faced, ugly cry, all the details of everything that had happened, everything that was going on, and I even threw in some of everything that I was sure was going to happen in the future. So Scott was kind enough to let me finish, and then this is what I remember. I don't know if this is what he said to me, but what I remember him saying was, I almost stopped you, because every time you talk about that in detail, you're re-traumatizing yourself. And I had never heard it put that way before. Now, he wasn't telling me not to talk about it, quite the opposite. You know, he encouraged me to talk about it and a few other things that probably people in my life that loved me, that knew what was going on, had been telling me before. But for some reason that day, I just could hear Scott with the ear of my heart. And when he said I was re-traumatizing myself, something shifted. And something has happened since then that I can tell people now with just a hashtag and two words. And I don't have to go into details. And so we talked that day, and then I remember sitting in the parking lot in my car, and I looked up the definition of trauma. And my friends and I were reading a book, and the author was talking about trauma. And I realized that's what was going on, you know? And, and everything shifted for me. And so I was able to get started on some of the things that he had told me, and I knew these things already. Pray, gratitude, meditate be of service, help someone else, but I got back to the basics. Literally, the basics. When I'm walking the dog, walk the dog. My feet are in my shoes on the stage of the Vogue. Okay, that's not really good because my friend told me I wouldn't be able to see all you. <laughs> but, but you get what I mean? Like today is December 12th and I'm in a room full of like-minded people and all is good. And so I got back to the basics. I started praying instead of just reciting prayers that I have memorized. I started meditating. I added a nighttime meditation and would do guided meditations throughout the day. I'd pick a topic and just do that. I prayed to be of service and God answers that one quickly for me because literally that night or the next day, my phone rang and it was Los Angeles. It was our friend, Kimberly McFarland. She asked me for a favor. I said, sure, what can I do for you? She said, I'm flying your mom in on the red eye. Can you pick her up Friday morning at the airport? And I was thinking, man, I should have asked what she needed first. <laughs> so I agreed, and she sent me the flight information, and I thought, this is great. I can, do, I can help my mom. I can help Kimberly. I can help my brother, Kai, who usually has to do the driving. That's a triple before 5 a.m. on a Friday. <laughs> great way to start the day. So I show up at the airport on time, pick up my mom, and I'm sure I asked her how her flight was and how her trip was, because that's what you do when you pick somebody up at the airport. Get to her house, it was raining that morning. I get out, I take her bag to the door, and I get back in the car, and my mom doesn't get out. And I'm thinking, man, I am really tired, and I just wanna go home and go to bed, but I didn't have anywhere to go, and I didn't have anything to do. And before I said what I was thinking, I stopped, and I did a 16 second time in. And I remember thinking, I'm sitting in the car with my mom, who wants to talk to me? This is really cool. And my mom is awesome. And I'm so grateful for her, and I can show her how grateful I am by being present for her. And my heart smiled straight to my face, which happens sometimes too. And I remember physically turning to face her, and we just talked. And she had some cool stuff to tell. Like, not only did she go to the Tony Bennett concert, she went with Tavis Smiley and was backstage with Tavis Smiley and Tony Bennett at the Hollywood Bowl like a couple of days before his 80th birthday and she showed me some other pictures and we talked until the sun came up and so I waited for her to get in her house and I'm driving home and I'm all happy my heart was so full because I felt human again I had a moment where I felt like myself and I was so excited I knew it was Friday, I was gonna see my angels, the girls that Richard was talking about, I call them my angels, they're here tonight. And I could not wait to tell them about my breakthrough, right? So I show up Friday night and this woman shows up who I'd never seen before and she brings a friend. So she introduces us to her friend and her friend shares with us that it's her birthday, which is really cool because we love birthdays. And then she tells us she's really grateful to be with us but she's also sad and grieving. 
because she had just lost her mom. Gets me every time. I was like, wow. All of a sudden, my breakthrough aha moment just became wow. In that moment, I realized this stuff is not about mastering anything. It's not about breakthroughs or aha moments. It's truly about the gift of each precious moment. It's truly about the gift of being able to be present for the people in your life that you love. Because we all know the moments are not going to come again. But I forget that the opportunity for those moments may never come again. Now, my mom is here tonight. It's her first time hearing any of this, especially that car story. So I'm going to end with this. Mom, I love you. And I'm so grateful for you and every moment that we get to spend together. And I will continue to practice to be present for all of them. Thank you.